This is something we don't get to show you every day. Uh, today is like um, June 18th at 6 a.m. We just uh, woke up. We're getting ready to start a new episode, but first I'm gonna get uh, some Red Bull before getting started and um, maybe waiting for 8 a.m. for uh, the um, supermarket to open. But check out the, that view, it's amazing. Um, there's lots of work and uh, everybody's stressed on time and deadlines at work, but being here, listening to the birds, listening to the chipmunks, looking at the view, uh, completely changes my state of mind and, and I'm relaxed now. So it's uh, great. So with that said, um, today we begin to, to install uh, Underslav uh, insulation. So let's get into it. So it seems that anytime there's like gravel work, Marcela runs away to Mexico. This time around, she had like a conference from her company, and then she decided to stay in uh, in San Diego, Tijuana, for the weekend. So here I am. I decided to do some framing in the meantime, so that when she comes back, she can help me out with this. Um, but yeah, now that the uh, plumbing inspection is passed, uh, the first step will be to try to level this gravel as much as we can. Uh, right now, it's going to be like a rough pass, and then uh, I'll be running the uh, laser to make sure that everything is properly leveled and then we will begin to, play, uh, to install the insulation. All right, after a little bit of a workout, I've uh, roughly flattened the gravel. Uh, the plumbing still needs to be done next week when Marcella gets here. In the meantime, I'm going to begin stumping the gravel and then uh, we'll begin to take care of the rough spots next week with the laser. We're going to break it into a grid, that way we don't step on the same square again and then break it, so let's get going. for the first time ever, so we're super excited. And this also gives us the opportunity to experience the local life. We're trying the restaurants. So a little bit frustrated this morning because as soon as uh, we were going to level the gravel, turn on the laser, turns out the battery was out of power. And um, I charged every battery, but here we go. And, and then I just had to go back home and charge it. So I ended up doing a few runs to Lowe's and whatnot, but I guess uh, we've wasted at least half a day. So it's time to get to work. So let me show you how we're going to be leveling the gravel. I'm pretty sure you know if you're in the construction business, we're going to be using a pole stick. Uh, so first, let me show you here. Uh, we have the uh, a laser. I don't know if you can see the light shining through the camera right there. Uh, the actual height of the, the, the line doesn't really matter. And then we're going to be using our pole stick right here. You can see that device telling us that the laser is higher. And then when you get a continuous beep, that means that you're in line with the laser. So we're going to be working around the uh, site, making sure everything is in uh, level. And uh, once we do that, uh, we'll be ready to install ins installation. So we are done with the gravel. Uh, making it perfect would take several years. So it's at the plus or minus acceptable level. So we're done with it. But I want to show you this, it's pretty interesting. It's called a bladder. It can be the wear back water flow preventer. So what this one does, it's under the valve and it's, um, it, it uh, embraces the pipes. So even if this valve is accessible from the upper floor, we are still protected from any radon or any gas that would be coming uh, from the ground. It was a long day of uh, day one for installing the underslab insulation. We managed to get gravel leveled, even with the setback of having to go get the laser where we started like at noonish. It's now past seven, so we gotta be quiet, otherwise we'd keep going. This is probably the hardest part, taking care of all the plumbing pipes and whatnot. And once that's taken care of, I think it should be pretty much easy breezy because there's nothing else, just uh, full panels. You can see the, meta, the panel, the, the block for the concrete, so that when they pour concrete, I can remove that in the future for the metal post. So that's a critical component. And yeah, so that's it. So you can see there Marcella sweeping. So we'll just get back to this tomorrow. Hopefully we can finish. So we are building our time capsule today. It's a pretty awesome experience. I'm very happy that we are doing this. So um, 
Well, here's the idea. We have an aluminum tin, and then we're going to include a bunch of stuff. So Yeah, we were thinking uh, it has to survive time, hopefully. So I don't know about those paper bills, if they will survive, but hopefully they will. We wrote a few uh, letters and uh, cans that we opened up. Uh, it's our engraving, and I think this should survive as long as it doesn't get hit by something big or something. Um, yeah, we're going to be putting this in, in the slab of the foundation and hopefully it will never be opened for... Um, hundreds of years. Hundreds of years, hopefully. Well, we won't be opening it, so maybe the next donor or the next few owners. So. Yeah, or maybe an archaeologist, who knows. But it's still pretty fun to write a letter to somebody in the future, so we're having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, the mountain is super difficult, so who knows? And with future technology, maybe they'll just like just, just open it and it'll be super easy to move things around, so who knows? Yeah, maybe they'll come visit us, you know? They say like, hey, they are from 2022, let's go and pay them a visit. Yeah, so. we'll do like the John uh, James Jones Hopkins, John Hopkins experiment where we are inviting you from the uh, people from, from the future to come today to uh, say hi. Yep. So, well, so what are we including? So, uh, from our personal life, we're including some coins. These ones are from our trip to Norway, so it's, it's pretty special. I also have one from Canada. Um, we have several coins from Mexico as well. I don't know if you can see them. And I already wrapped the American ones with the quarters and dimes and uh, pennies and um, I don't know what else, but all the coins I had, we have a, a few of those. Um, then... I decided uh, to include this uh, Ethereum uh, token. Um, I come to, to like the concept of uh, cryptocurrency, so hopefully they will uh, be a thing in the future. Uh, so this is for the future people. Hopefully they'll know what it is and uh, it'll be worth millions of dollars by then. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's fun to have a, a, a bit of the evolution of money because we have the coins and I'm going to include the paper bills, I don't know if they will survive. These Mexican ones are like plastic uh, something, so maybe they have a better chance. I'm including a $2 bill because they are not very common even right now. So uh, I also have, I already wrapped them in paper, but this is a euro and this is the new $20 bill from Mexico. And then I'm including a couple of credit cards. So you have the evolution of money from, you know, coins and paper bills to plastic and then to cryptocurrency. Yeah, so did, did I mention uh, that we uh, wrote some letters? Oh yeah, yeah, this yes, is Marcellus. <laughs> um, so these are the letters. I opened up some Red Bulls and um, there you can see we kind of engraved it. So this is my story for the future people. Uh, if you find it, I guess you'll know exactly what it says, but I'll give you a quick summary. I go a little bit about the year that we're living in, like uh, we're just getting out of COVID-19. Uh, there was an insurrection on the government by the previous president. Um, inflation is going crazy. Uh, I'm a, an electrical engineer, I'm a software engineer. Uh, things look pretty green, but actually are pretty nice. Uh, we're building our house and uh, so things like that is what I'm uh, mentioning. A bit of the experience of the house building in the cold, in the wind, with snow and rain. Oh and yeah, yeah, that. building the, <laughs> this house in the cold. We also uh, put our YouTube channel there in the future for them to like and subscribe. So uh, who knows our future, uh, not children will inherit that money, I guess. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also have my letter and, and it's kind of similar in mine. I talk a little bit about uh, how we met, uh, which was in elementary school, if you didn't know. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of our story. We are immigrants. I also talk a bit about uh, about the world. So about, uh, I mentioned in Black Lives Matter. I mentioned, I mentioned in, uh, the issues we have with gun violence. Um, I have the Me Too movement and the war in Ukraine, which is going on right now. So it's just little mentions of, of what we have we have going on in here. Um, and yeah, I still think we have a, a beautiful world. So I'm, I hope that they they do too. And uh, so now to finish up, I guess we have these things. Or? Yeah. So I'm going to include this. This is the, the cruise ship we took to Norway. So it's just a little souvenir. Um, and it was pretty special for us, so we are including it. I'm including a postcard from Chicago with a bit of the story of what I like to do in there. And I'm going to include, I have also the transit map from Chicago. Um, so, yeah, and our pictures. You want to show them the pictures? 
Oh, well, he grabs them. I'm also going to include some of my IDs. Um, these are from uh, when I immigrated to the United States, so it may be fun for them to see a bit of history of immigration. All right, so I guess uh, here's the first one. Uh... That's right here, where we just got to Netherlands. It's, yeah. Yeah. This is where we're building the house in Netherlands, so we it was early in the process. I don't know if we owned the land when this was we taken. We did, yes. So cool. Yeah, so then this is from our honeymoon. We came to Colorado, we lived in Chicago uh, for like a winter, and uh, I told her this is my place to be, and uh, so yeah. We lived in Chicago for a few years and we came here for the winter. She didn't want to <laughs> come uh, to Colorado, she loved Chicago, so. Yeah, but I'm happy we are here, it's pretty cool. We have a picture from when we went to uh, the world of Coca-Cola in Atlanta, we also lived there. We worked at Coca-Cola together at the same time, so here's another picture. And actually, well, we have a photo bomber right there in the back, <laughs> we don't know who that is, but she's going to posterity as well. Yeah. Um, this is us just uh, wearing some costumes. Um, we have some legacy from Mexico with our um, uh, luchador, luchador is, masks. Yeah. And the little teddy bear with a <laughs> luchador mask. Luchador mask. <laughs> yeah, this is when we start purchasing all the tools for, uh, for building the house. Um, our uh, Makita, our compressor, uh, nail guns. Anyway, lots of fun. Yeah. We're using them now, you'll see. This is from one training we did with Schluter for doing a tile installation. So it's a kind of part of the house. And then we have some of the sides. So this one is it's just us, but it's the side as it used to be. You can see my gimbal right there because uh, that's maybe when we started making YouTube videos with, with my phone. Yeah. This is from, uh, what was what episode was this? But you'll remember I the think... septic pits. So it's a episode, season one, episode two. Yeah, episode two, I think. Yeah. Oh, this is a video that we have not posted because it was an experiment gone kind of wrong. <laughs> Maybe we should post that one. Yeah, we, um, we were trying to make uh, cookies. Uh, actually, we were trying to make uh, dish plates from uh, the, all the trees that we, we've got. And uh, she decided to run uh, the cookies uh, through the planer, through the planer with uh, the grain, and then uh, that ended up like. Psh! I have video of it. Uh, it actually <laughs> broke my gimbal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And here, we, here we have one of the excavations. You know, when we had like all the open ground, and this is one even with the excavator. I think the excavator machine is there. Yes, and the full excavation. And so, yeah, that's uh, what we're doing. And uh, we're going to be burying this under the slab of the main house. Uh, but we're going to put it close to the plumbing in general so that if one day it is to be found, um, it has a more, a better chance to be found. So, yeah. Uh, I would just talk a bit about the conservation of these things. So we have collected these silica things that come with um, stuff you buy. Those have sort of a moisture. And then I'm wrapping everything in this paper. So it's acid free archive paper. Every single thing you see in here, it's wrapped individually in paper. And what this does is if there's any chemical reaction between these things, it's not going to affect the other one. So everything is getting wrapped. And finally, they should be also wrapped in um, acid-free um, plastic bags. We bought them on Amazon and Amazon delivered it to a resident, but who knows what resident was it because it was not us. Um, so we're just going to put a Ziploc to protect it a little bit. and. Uh, I think that's it. Let's uh, pack it up and bury it. All right. Let's do it. My letter to the future. You can also tell, they, they'll be able to tell that I drink a lot of Red Bull. Yeah, and Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>
So yesterday we managed to finish all the um, panel installation. Also, we started on the main, on the tiny house mostly. We ran out of material. We just needed one more panel, uh, and that was a little bit expected because the panels came in 36 count pallets, and we wouldn't buy just one more pallet just to get one more panel. So. Uh, that will have to go to Home Depot Lowe's and get it individually. Um, today the main effort will be to uh, install uh, tape and that will be our effort today. Hopefully we can finish this episode today. So one large, one tiny to go. Welcome to our mechanical room. We've begun laying out the insulation. We've already set the uh, gravel to level. Um, and now we just need to take care of these uh, smaller pieces and uh, tape it. And we should probably be in good shape. Um, what you see here is potentially the hardest part about this uh, mechanical room tiny home. Um, as it is coming up to three inches, the insulation is three inches high. So that means it's going to be almost flush with the concrete. Um, so we're going to be putting this uh, uh, insulating gasket typically used for sill plates on top of it and then on top of it anyway on the next episode you will see we will have a, a stego vapor barrier as well so it will not be directly in contact with the concrete so but yeah let's get back to work. And we are finally done with the underslab insulation. So after applying the panels, we apply the home sealer on every single joint, and then we run out of it. So you're going to see we also use duct tape. So duct tape, it, it should work perfectly fine. It's, uh, it's rubberized, it's uh, water resistant, so it's going to have the same function. The only thing uh, home sealer has is that it's a little bit more stretchy. But honestly, in this environment, that may not make uh, a difference. And um, duct tape holes, uh, it, it seems to be just much stronger compared to what we have seen. Um, the other thing we did is we sealed every single uh, penetration we had in here. So what I did with these ones, it's pretty much just uh, short pieces of home sealer, and I just apply them like this to cover the whole seal, the, sorry, the, the whole circle. And then I added uh, larger pieces on the corners. And I think, uh, I think that makes it for this episode. You're going to see the vapor barrier. Oh no, I have one important thing. This is our, um, our spot for the metal column. So this one will eventually come out. And uh, what we did here is we did the block. We applied this plastic, uh, plastic wrap. And we're going to apply some oil or some uh, concrete uh, release so that uh, after pouring the concrete, we can take this one out. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is apply the vapor barrier. You're going to see that on the next episode. But for this one, I think we are all set. So thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.